All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego bright and early in the morning. And today I am joined by Ryan Cote, who is in New Jersey. How are you doing, Ryan? Hey, John. Doing great. And Ryan is from the Ballantine organization, and Ryan is the uh, director of digital um, director of digital services there. And what we wanted to talk about today was the state of digital marketing in 2020. So, um, so Ryan, first of all, I mean, you know, obviously digital marketing has been all pervasive over the last, you know, however number of, of years. Uh, in lots of different forms, but I often hear people nowadays, you know, they struggle a little bit with how to effectively market digitally because they feel like it's so, it's so, uh, you know, it's so overwhelming. There's so many things going on and they don't know where to put their money. They don't know what's effective, like email marketing. Is it retarget marketing? Is it all of these, all of these things? So I find that people are very overwhelmed by the whole concept of digital marketing. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, you have a lot of options and the options are always changing. And so mm -hmm. it's, uh, I definitely can sympathize with those feelings. It's, uh, you always have new platforms coming up, especially with, like social media. And if you sure. look at like SEO and, um, you know, Google and even, even the paid search side, things are always changing the issues with Facebook. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's what, what it's showing us, you know, cause we deal with this every day. Our typical client mm -hmm. is a small business, you know, manufacturer, contractor, et cetera. Um, it's shown us you can't rely on, on one channel, you know, as an example, uh, SEO, we do a tremendous amount of SEO work, but mm -hmm. a first page and even like a, a first page, number one spot, right. it's not what it used to be. Cause if you look at the Google search results, you've got the ads at the top and then yeah. you usually have like images or videos or mm -hmm. the map pack. And then, and then like halfway or three quarters of the way down the screen, then you're the number one listing. So it's, yeah, you, know, you can't rely on one channel. Yeah. And, and I mean, and it's very frustrating for people, obviously, because I mean, especially when you say small or even medium sized businesses, because it's obvious that the larger companies with the big marketing budgets are start, you know, they have all those big ads sewn up at the top. They have they seem to have so many advantages over you. So what, what kind of small business do in order to compete in, in, in a world, as you said, where even if you're the smartest SEO person and you get a you know, first page Page ranking, it still may be lost in the mix. I mean, I think you can still compete with the the big guys. I mean, we have, we all have, as you know, we're small business too. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have the same resources. We might not have the overall budget to spend on the ads, but if you're a local business, you don't need a, a, a budget the size of Geico or Coca Cola. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because you're you're marketing to a, a local audience, so you, you require a smaller budget. And so we have all the same resources. It's more about you know, I always tell small businesses, it's always about identifying like what, what, you know, obviously what your goals are, what are your goals and who your audience is you're trying to reach? What is your budget? And then that budget will dictate like what channels you can use. You might not be able to use every single channel. You might have mm -hmm. to pick and choose, or you might have, if you do want to work with an agency, you might have to identify what can I handle internally? And then what would I outsource? Typically you're outsourcing the more technical stuff like SEO and paid search. Right. And then you're handling in-house what you can do like social media and content. And then you can kind of piece together a strategy where you're not doing everything because we never recommend diluting yourself too much like that. But you're at least um, you're at least taking advantage of Google, you know, social media, whether it's LinkedIn or Facebook. Um, you have building an email list, uh, creating really good content, which then you repurpose across all your other channels. So it's still possible. We we have the same resources as the big companies. Yeah. What are, what are some of the things that you think are becoming um, perhaps, you know, more effective now that small businesses should look at as opposed to maybe, you know, things that are less effective? Are there are there anywhere? I mean, if you're working with a small business or a small to medium business now, are there are there ones that you really highly recommend they focus on and maybe defocus on some others? Um, I would say I, we see blogging making a comeback. I know it's sort of um seems like old school a little bit, but we're seeing, we're seeing blogs rank more and more in Google search results. I think it's because Google, they're trying to answer questions, um, especially with voice search. And so we mm -hmm. see blogs ranking more and more. Also, there's the Google Discover platform and you're on your phone and Chrome, they, you know, they recommend a content, you know, normally blogs. Uh, and then we like blogs because you can repurpose it. You know, you've got um, your keyword optimizing the content, you're putting it on your site. So it sort of becomes an SEO play a little bit. 
Um, and then it gives you content that you can put on social media. Um, you know, you can uh, mention your email newsletter. So you create that one piece of content and then it's, it's utilized in all different channels. And so I would say, I would say content and I, and I, and I wouldn't get too worried about having to always come up with new content because mm -hmm. what we do is we'll, you know, we'll create new content of course, but then as part of the whole process, we'll look at old blog posts. And then if we see any that are doing well, we'll add more content to them, you know, try to upgrade the content, refresh it. And whenever we do that, usually we see an increase in, in organic. So I would say con content is the most, I and mean, we, we always recommend multiple channels, but if sure. you were saying, uh, you know, give me one channel to do, I probably, for, for the typical small business owner, I probably would say double down on content, make the best content you can, and then try to utilize it in all the channels that you're active on. Yeah, and I guess that's one of the challenges that a, a lot of, obviously, um, organizations face is they say, yeah, I, I hear you, okay, content, content, but they don't really know where to start with the content because it seems mm -hmm. like um, they said, well, you know, we don't really have any in-house writers. We're not really good with that. So how do you help people? I mean, if they can't afford to outsource the content creation, how do you help them get over that hump of being able to create some simple content themselves? Well, I mean, if they... If they can't write the content themselves and they have to, and they don't have to use an agency for this. There's plenty mm -hmm. of writer, writer marketplaces out there um, where you can buy content. There's tons of them. Um, so if you can't write the content yourself, you're going to have to use some sort of marketplace or a freelance writer. Uh, what we do honestly for a lot of our clients now, this is something I think your audience could, could do as well is we do transcription content. So we'll have an idea of what the topic is that we want to talk to the client about. We have the topic and then we have, you know, five to 10 questions for them. We get on a 10 minute phone call and we just basically start asking them all the questions. And then it's the, the 10 minute conversation usually outputs like a six to 800 word article. And so then we transcribe that, um, in that conversation and then we edit that into a blog post. So what, what your audience could do is, you know, they could, you know, use their phone and, and um, record themselves talking and then send that to a, a writer for them to proofread and edit it. So they're still giving their knowledge but someone's doing the heavy lifting in terms of writing the blog post. And that might be a happy medium. Yeah, no, I think that's a great idea, um, especially because, I mean, you obviously, you know, anybody who's in a business, running a business, I mean, you have ideas about things and, I, and, and you know, if you're engaged in a simple conversation with somebody, you're going to have insights, et cetera, to share with them about, you know, what's going on in your industry or problems that you can solve. So um, yeah. leveraging, being able to just talk to somebody and then somebody being able to translate that content in, or into, into content in different formats is a great idea. Um, so content is one. Is, is there anything else? Because one of the things that a lot of people struggle with today is, is say, uh, email marketing, right? They're, people just aren't sure anymore whether email marketing really works. Because I have this debate a lot with people about the, um, you know, how, how effective email marketing is anymore. Um, yeah, if so, we, so we do it for most of our clients. It's typically in the form of a newsletter. The thing about email you know, it's very saturated. It's like anything, and every you know, direct. We do direct mail here, and you know, we still do a lot of it. But it's changed. It just it's, you have to adapt to the changes. And email, it's very saturated now. You're competing with hundreds. You know, if you look at my wife's inbox, it's hundreds of thousands of emails. Right. Um, but you know, it's the one platform that you really own because you know, think about Facebook. You know, if you if you spent the last five years building up a massive fan base. You know, it's not really a platform that you own with all the changes they've made and whatnot. Um, even SEO, uh, they could take away your rankings mm -hmm. uh, with an algorithm update. But email, you know, it's I know there's ish, slight nuances like with Gmail and there the different ways sure. to handle the deliverability, deliverability there. But essentially, you have an asset. If you have an email database, you have an asset that you own and and um, and can, you can control. So what we like to do is, you know, email for us in the way we do it. It's just part of the whole strategy. You know, we're sending out a monthly or, or bi-weekly newsletter to, to the client's list, prospect list, customer list. We're uh, sharing, you know, thought leadership content. We're up, we're announcing, you know, company news like trade shows or what have you. It's just a piece of the puzzle and it, it generates traffic to the website. And then once we generate traffic to the website, that traffic gets retargeted when they leave. So we look mm -hmm. at email as like another touch point, a nurturing tool, another way to generate traffic to the site. For us, at least, it's not a stand, It's not like a standalone service. Yeah. It's part of the overall thing. And I think that's the. And I think that's the. Uh, I think that's one of the biggest issues that I think a lot of um, people struggle with, especially as I said, small to medium companies. As you said, it. What you're talking about there is 
it's one touch point and it's part of an overall strategy. So it's multiple pieces working together, right? In sync. Exactly. And I think that's where a lot of companies struggle is that they start doing maybe three or four things, but they do them kind of in isolation uh, of each other. Yeah, that's actually something that we preach a lot now is trying to get all the channels to work together um, because they do. Like, honestly, you create a blog post, like I mentioned, you put it on social media, you're driving traffic back to the website, that traffic gets remarketed. Even like if you look at search engine optimization and paid search, they're both going after keywords. So if you're doing both, you want to share keyword data, especially because paid search, you get that data in a lot faster because mm-hmm. you're you're paying for the clicks, whereas SEO, it's a could be a 12-month you know, slog to get really good results. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm absolutely hundred uh, percent. And then the other thing is, I guess there's a lot of people struggle with the, with social media because they're not really sure what to do with it. Right. I mean, LinkedIn, I think most people figure that out and think, okay, yeah, I, I can see the benefit of that. But then they're like, should I be on Facebook? You know, is that where my cousin, should I be on Instagram? You know, should I be whatever new thing is going to come out next? How do you help people um, figure out what their social media presence should be and where they should focus their time. Yeah, I mean, definitely you need to understand your audience and where they hang out because there, there, there are slight nuances, you know, LinkedIn versus Facebook, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Honestly, and, and this might be just a client base that we work with, we're taking our clients in a completely different trend where we're cutting back the amount of content we do for social media. Um, we've, you know, in the past, we do four or five posts per week. Uh, but because the organic reach is so small now, a fraction of your of your actual fans see it. And so what we're recommending clients do is max two posts per week. Usually we try to get them to do one post per mm-hmm. week and spend more time on the advertising part because that's the real magic. And and I know there's, it, you know, it depends on the business. Of course, there's some that like Instagram is it just kills it for them. But in general, at least for the clients that we have, we're recommending one post per week, max two, and let's spend, like they have their content budget Let's spend more time on the actual advertising part, you know, boosting posts, standalone ads, lead form mm-hmm. ads, you know, how does the ad advertising strategy fit in with the content we're creating? So that's what we're recommending just based on what we're seeing. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good advice because I think sometimes um, people get carried away, obviously, with the posting element, right? They think the volume is what it's all about, like keep posting, keep posting, keep posting. But like you say, it's, um, you know, post something good and and then boost it yeah and if you i guess if you have like a gigantic budget where you can post four times a week and boost every single post then i guess you're in a good Mm -hmm. spot but that's typically at least you know Mm -hmm. for a typical small business that's not the case so is there anything new you see on the horizon um, for digital marketing that we should be uh, looking out for um i would say we're, we're 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 taking a renewed interest in google my business um, we think that's going to become more and more important, especially for a local business. Um, mm-hmm. And so we're trying to really double down on that, get uh, better map rankings, uh, reviews, building citations for maps, really fully maximizing the Google My Business platform, you know, using their post feature that Google lets you do. We see that, we see that being more and more important for, for Google, especially as everything becomes more local. Like most searches on Google are, have local intent, you know, um, and so we see Google My Business become more and more important. So we're double downing on what we're doing for clients, the training that we're taking our, our team here to try to get better results. So I would say for your audience, one takeaway here is, and there, most people are probably on Google My Business, but if you're not, mm-hmm. verify your listing, you know, google.com forward slash business, but just don't verify it. Fully maximize that, that listing. Photos, hours, website, category, description, posts, everything. Just spend a whole day and just... Go all in, go all in, and call all in on it, and I think that's uh, a good takeaway for your audience. Yeah, I think that's a great takeaway for the audience because it is kind of frustrating sometimes, actually, when you come across a, a, a Google My Business um, listing for a company and there's like nothing there, or it's very superficial and stuff. You know, it's kind of it can be irritating, and 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 we have such short attention spans sometimes that maybe your your only touch point. And it's, and it, honestly, it's usually the first touch point someone has with mm-hmm. you because for example, if you type in Ballantine Corp in, in Google or, um, or, you know, Ballantine NJ, yeah. the, the sidebar is that Google, my business. So they, everyone sees our reviews, they see our information, they see our posts that we're doing and that, you know, it paints a good first impression and then they go to our site and they're kind of going to our site sort of pre-sold. They see all the, all the reviews and stuff. 
That's fantastic. Well, listen, Ryan, this has been great. Um, Ryan Cote of the the Ballantine Group. Um, all of Ryan's information will be in his contributor profile and links to uh, his organization. But before we go, Ryan, just tell people a little bit more about you and what your company does. Yeah, so uh, we're Ballantine out of New Jersey, family owned going back to the mid 60s. I'm third generation. We do direct mail and digital marketing all, all in house here in Fairfield, New Jersey. Uh, I also set up a special page for your audience that they go to valentine.com forward slash sales pop on there is they connect me on LinkedIn. There's also a offer for a free video review where I personally go through their website, look at their social media, look at their SEO, just try to give actionable advice. It's usually like a 10 minute video. Excellent. That's great. That's fantastic, uh, Ryan. We really appreciate that. So make sure you click on that link and take advantage of uh, of Ryan's special offer. All right. Well, uh, my name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine Pipeline CRM. This has been fascinating, Ryan. Hope you got some good takeaways, everybody, on, on digital marketing. There was a lot of great advice in there. And I'll see you for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.